inflation still remains the headline CPI more than two times the Fed's expectation. So at some point, the Fed is going to have to find a way to get back down to, to ground level. I don't think they have a lot of tools to do that. We can get into this later, but issues around the fact that uh, you know the Treasury has got to find a, around a trillion, trillion dollars of liquidity in the coming months, and there's other issues that have to happen. Uh, so I don't think they're going to be able to continue to raise rates in that environment. In a recent interview at Kicko News, Michael Wilkerson, CEO and founder of Stormwall Advisors, shared his insights on the true inflation rate. Wilkerson emphasizes that the actual inflation rate may be two to three times higher than the CPI. According to him, there's a possibility that inflation could reach as high as 12% this year. He further explains how investors can safeguard their assets from the effects of inflation. Additionally, he provides his predictions for the performance of gold in relation to the inflationary trends. According to Wilkerson's analysis, inflation in crucial categories such as food, electricity, higher education, and medical care is running two to three times higher than what the CPI data are indicating. According to PricewaterhouseCoopers, healthcare expenditures have witnessed an annual growth rate of 7.6% since 2006, in contrast to the official CPI data that indicate a 2.6% annual growth over the previous decade. Wilkerson argues that relying on the CPI, which he believes downplays the actual magnitude of price hikes into a form of gaslighting by the government towards the American public regarding inflation. Wilkerson's remarks are a reaction to the latest CPI statistics, which revealed a decrease in the annual inflation rate to 4% in May 2023 from 4.9% in April and a significant drop from the peak of 9.1% in June 2022. However, Wilkerson believes that by the end of 2023, inflation measured by the CPI could potentially rise as high as 12%. He specifically highlights oil price shocks and connects this potential surge to both monetary factors and supply-side variables. Here are a few glimpses from the discussion that we'd like to show you. Before we proceed, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. There is this expectation of diminishing uh, inflation. However, when you look at what's under the numbers, what you see is this is all being driven by energy, in particular by decline in oil and gas prices. So down uh, 20% for gasoline, down 37% for fuel oils. That's really pushing the overall number down. We've already seen signs that the very rapid increase in interest rates, raising of rates over the past year, almost broke the banking system. Uh, you can get to a destination, but if you drive there too too fast, too aggressively, uh, you're putting yourself and others at risk. And in this case, the Fed, I believe, will be doing great damage to the economy, probably more damage than what might be worth uh, in the near term uh, for the incremental benefit in the inflation fight. I do think they have to keep fighting. I think that rates are the way, uh, the tool that they have at hand to do it. But I think we would be uh, risking a, a relapse in terms of some of the dangers that we saw in March and April around our big banks. If I generalize, inflation is running two to three times what the CPI data are showing in those key categories, in uh, food, in electricity, in education, higher education specifically, in medical care, et cetera. I don't think it's uh, a coincidence. I don't think it's an accident. I think the revisions and changes to CPI are an attempt to moderate the information that is being shared uh, and to try in a way to gaslight the American consumer to contradict their own experience and what they are actually having to live with and deal with. And by the way, you see it from the other side of the angle in terms of uh, increase in uh, credit card usage, debt consumer debt balances, uh, shrinking of savings accounts, all the things that are showing on the other side. And I should also mention that even if you do stick with CPI and that related data, what you're seeing is that real weekly wages are going down. Uh, the consumers are not keeping up, even though nominal wages are up, let's say 6% uh, in the past few months uh, against what peak inflation of 9%. Nonetheless, that's not real. When you look at the real uh, income growth, uh, it's hovering around zero or negative. So no, I don't believe the CPI data accurately reflects uh, the environment in which we find ourselves and doesn't reflect the experience that businesses, consumers, households are undergoing in this environment. The gold price has surpassed a significant resistance level of $1,960 in anticipation of the release of the United States CPI data. With investors eagerly awaiting the inflation numbers to gain insights into the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy, the precious metal is expected to exhibit volatile movements. 
According to Wilkerson, the current circumstances present a favorable outlook for gold due to the potential risks of inflation, an imminent recession, and potential bank failures. He asserts that the stars are aligning for the precious metal, indicating a strong long-term performance. Based on his theory, the projected increase in energy costs and inflation rates expected to begin in the fall could drive gold prices to surpass $2,000 by the year's end. Uh, in the banking crisis, we saw both gold and when I say the banking crisis, I, I guess the March phase of it. I, I don't necessarily believe that it's over, but during you know those panic moments, you saw safe haven buys in gold, you saw it in crypto, you saw it elsewhere. Um, it's eased off. And I think, again, it goes back to right now, there are some interesting alternatives. Um, you know, the dollar is not showing the strength that I, if you look back at 2022, it feels like there's a very, there was a strong correlation between a rising and strong dollar and a, a as a constraint on, on the gold price in dollar, in dollar terms. That isn't really there anymore. You've got all of these things that we've been talking about, the banking crisis, uh, inflation and recession. So it, it does appear that the stars are aligning for gold. Now, the perennial frustration is, okay, the stars have aligned before and sometimes it doesn't happen. But from my perspective, and we talked about it in the context of miners, I feel comfortable with gold, I'm very comfortable with gold, very comfortable with the miners. And uh, I've stopped looking at my watch, in other words, to ask when. I'm just... Uh, sticking with the conviction over the long run and something that uh, that I believe will perform. I think the summer is going to be somewhat boring. I think it's going to be somewhat boring as inflation. I think it's going to be somewhat boring. You know, We're not going to see a lot of news. I did paint a scenario where we could see uh, sort of chapter three of this season's episodes, episode three of this season's uh, banking crisis. Uh, and if we get you know, further liquidity squeeze from, from treasuries, that, you know, that could put us in a bad place. But otherwise, I think the summer is going to be boring. And uh, if it's boring for inflation and it's boring for banking crises and other geopolitical crises, it may very well be boring for gold. But if you stick with my uh, the hypothesis or the conjecture, maybe nothing more than that, that we're going to see or you know, see, see some movement in energy, see some movement in inflation beginning in the fall, then yes, I think there's a plausible scenario that we could see gold back above uh, the 2000 level by the end of the year. I don't see a massive, uh, you know, uh, 15, 20% breakout, but I can see a 10% breakout, uh, which of course would be wonderful and we'd all welcome it. I think it's a, it's a reasonably safe harbor in an environment where other things look uh, potentially overpriced. Do you have any particular picks then in the sector? Well, and I can't remember what I said last time, but I continue to be a big fan of, of Exxon, of, Phil, of Phillips, of uh, Chesapeake, others uh, in, in the sector. And as I mentioned before, uh, I still like the miners, and I know that sounds antiquated, but I look the gold miners, gold and silver miners, gold miners, and even you know the broader names like Rio Valley, but but certainly Numa others, just because um, I think that you're going to see again. You have very attractive dividends in the case of stuff. some of those names, double digit uh, yields at this point, and and I think for reasons that I know you and this program talk about a lot. Uh, gold is on the come. Now, is it always on the come? It, how long do we have to wait to see what's going to happen? I'm okay to wait. Uh, in the meantime, for the miners especially, uh, you get the dividend along the way. While certain studies suggest that gold can serve as an inflation hedge, it appears to be effective only over an extensive time span of more than a century. When examining shorter time periods, researchers have discovered that the inflation-adjusted price of gold fluctuates significantly. Since 1972, the average ratio of gold's price to the CPI has been 3.6. However, the current gold to CPI ratio stands at 6.4. This indicates that if gold were a straightforward and dependable hedge against inflation, its value would remain relatively stable in relation to the CPI. What is your opinion on Michael Wilkerson's perspective? Do you believe that the heavens are in harmony for the gold market? We encourage you to share your views in the comments section. If you found this content informative, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for the most up-to-date news and videos. We appreciate your input and look forward to hearing from you again soon.